So, I've been reading Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. I'm currently about 60 or maybe 65% of the way through. And I thought I'd give you an update. Now, this book has a very strong start. An exciting prologue that did a good job of setting the scene. So, let me set the scene of the book setting the scene. Yeah? A whole people, or what's left of them, after being driven out of their homeland, makes landfall with their fleet of ships. Out of food and out of options. Where they land is inhabited by unwelcoming natives who immediately attack these strange invaders. The, um, the ensuing battle quickly and thrillingly introduces the culture, weapons and magics of these people, including the ability to call down dragons to incinerate their enemies. This was one of the best prologues I've enjoyed in a book in recent years. It had everything one could ask for in the opening of a book. And then beyond the prologue, we um, skip forward 200 years. The queendom, the queendom of these people, the chosen as they refer to themselves, is an unfair one. It's a divisive caste-based system where the higher noble castes have absolute power. They can do whatever they want, even kill the lower castes without condemnation or consequence. They can treat the multitudes of lower castes with contempt, even killing them at will. Enter our protagonist, our hero, Tao. He's a young warrior of the lower caste, on the cusp of manhood, although he'd probably prefer a quieter, more administrative life. As the plot picks up pace, Tao's father, a man who Tao idolises, is executed by one of the higher caste nobles on a whim, sowing the seeds of furious vengeance in our main character. This is all good stuff. We've had an action-packed intro, and now we've got our underdog hero, with a righteous mission of just vengeance. It's brilliant. Cue the uh, multi-chapter montage of Tao joining the army and fueled by anger and thoughts of revenge, he excels in kicking ass. It's a war academy setting with a strong cast of other students providing good support characters. It's perfect. All the while, we, the reader, are learning ever more about this culture, their way of life, their history and their magics. Incidentally, some parts of the magic system are thoroughly and cleverly explained, which I enjoyed. And all the while, Tao is developing as a character. And this is where I felt it started to go wrong for me. Where I am, at the 65% uh, mark, Tao has developed into a character that I don't particularly like. His burning obsession to become the perfect warrior so that he can challenge and kill the men he holds responsible for his father's death has made him blind to everything else in life. He trains relentlessly, even using some of the knowledge he's gained to repeatedly send his soul to hell, so that he can fight demons 
as part of his training. But he can't beat the demons, so they continually tear his soul to shreds, causing excruciating pain. But Tao keeps going, threatening his own life and sanity. And this is all done with a focus on killing the first of his intended victims, despite his friends and trusted mentor pointing out to him that he has kind of got it all wrong. That the man Tao's training to kill is actually a pretty decent guy. That if Tao thought about the events a little more clearly, he might see that the man wasn't responsible for his father's death and had in fact done everything in his power to keep Tao's father alive. I'd had similar thoughts and was looking forward to how um, Tao would react to this. Would he have an epiphany that he'd been thinking of killing the wrong man? Would he remember things differently and furiously argue? Well, who knows? because there was no reaction. Tao didn't react. In fact, it was like he didn't really hear any of this conversation he was part of. Which was a bit odd. It was written as a big revelation, but then just skipped over. Like it didn't really happen. No reaction at all. It's at this point I've kind of lost my patience with Tao. He's not listening to advice. He's breaking his own mind by repeatedly sending himself to hell. And he's planning to fight a bunch of people he'll probably lose to. He seems to want to die. And at this point in the book, I think I'd be okay with that. But... That's not actually my issue with the book. This plot device of a hero pushing himself close to destruction before rising like a phoenix, it's classic. The rise due to happen any chapter now, I'm sure. No. The issue is the wider society that Tao is part of. We've already discussed how this civilization is based on a dehumanising caste system, which makes it feel quite rotten, but that's just the half of it. It has been 200 years since that initial battle for survival, which the, uh, the Chosen won by calling down dragons to burn the natives alive, sending these primitive, confused tribesmen into full retreat. And in those years, those centuries, the Chosen have pursued a relentless and merciless genocide against the natives of this land, killing every man, woman, child and baby they can find. Ten generations of ceaseless murder targeting victims purely because they lived there first. The Chosen have made no attempt to live side by side with the natives, They've not even tried to enslave them. Just a tireless campaign of extermination. And Tao and his cohort, despite being lower caste and, and somewhat persecuted themselves, are fully on board with this genocide, eager to kill as many of the natives as they can. So all of the um, heroes in this book well, I'm pretty sure they're the bad guys. Yeah. Now, I've just got to a point in the book where one of the characters, Jayad, he's a fairly decent guy. Um, best of a bad bunch, I suppose. He's actually suggested making peace with the natives. Well, at last, the voice of reason. Has someone in this society had an attack of conscience? A questioning of morals? No. It turns out that after two centuries of persecution, the natives have at last got their act together. They've formed an alliance of all the tribes 
and they've got themselves an army. And now, they're winning. Yes, the Chosen, in the face of their relentless genocide backfiring on them, now being on the losing side of the war, are at last willing to consider a reluctant peace. And I don't think they deserve it. Do you? No. I think that what I'd really like to happen at this point is for the narrative to abandon this whole set of characters and maybe swap to take the point of view of um, a young warrior on the native's side as he or she, along with their brethren, sweep down and push these genocidal invaders back into the ocean. But I doubt that's going to happen. Which has left me in a bit of a reading slump. Questioning whether to DNF this book. It's unlikely. I'll probably keep reading. I suspect Tao's redemption arc is um, probably about to take off soon. And who knows? Maybe the rest of his society has some redeeming features. But... I doubt it. It might be slow going. So, once again, it does seem that I'm rather hard to please when it comes to reading. But nay, it's not true. Um, because I recently read Malice, book one of the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Gwynn. Uh, I haven't reviewed it yet. I need to get around to that. But in summary, it's really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I recommend it. And I look forward to reading book two. So, perhaps I'm not that hard to please after all. Bye!